The knocking at the door at something like 9 in the a.m. sent waves of shock and migraine through Hamish's head. For fuck's sake. 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Nothing was sacred to these religious idiots, he muttered to himself. At first he thought, with what coherence he could muster, to just lie there and ignore it until they left. But the second knocking jolted him upright. He was suddenly seized with a feeling of indignation, having his hangover interrupted like this. Some things have to be respected, and not getting someone out of bed Sunday morning while they're sleeping Saturday night off would have to be a great many of those things. So it was with indigence that he stomped to the door, tactically refusing to put on pants so as to confront these shameless interlopers with the true price of their folly. At the door, as predicted, were two people. One was a woman, short and stout of stature, wearing glasses and smiling amiably. The other was a taller and older man with long hair and a grizzled face, who seemed to almost glower at him when he opened the door. He was also wearing shorts and nothing else. These were, in truth, not the people he expected, the earnest Christians rousing him from his esteemed repose to inquire if he had the time to talk about the dead and mythological. Hey, how's it going? It's Belinda, said the woman cheerfully in an annoyingly American accent. We're here to tell you the good news about wafflism. Wafflism, Hamish repeated, confused. He hadn't heard the word before. Or is that like a religion? No, it's not a religion, you fucking moron! The long-haired man suddenly exploded loudly in accents equally American. Hamish recoiled in both shock and anger. Oi, he retorted. You don't just come to people's houses and start yelling at them. Ah, fuck you, you fucking idiot! You're just fucking content to see the world filled with suffering and misery! What my friend is saying, interrupted the woman, still smiling and talking as if the man next to her was not a raving lunatic, is that life entails so much suffering and misery. Not just human life, all life. All sentient life. Sentience is a prison. Here, I'll show you a picture. She held up a drawing of what seemed like some kind of horizontal spirals intertwining with each other, spaced with vertical bars, through which appeared various limbs of various animals. It reminded Hamish a bit of something he'd expect to see on the cover of a book of Lovecraft's stories, albeit with less tentacles. What's that all about? Hamish asked, genuinely confused. That's sentience, the woman explained, as the male moved off to one side to smoke a vape pen and mutter something about how it's so easy to understand even a reasonable five-year-old could get it. It's a prison. All sentient life is a prison and we're all prisoners of it. We want to start a conversation about sentient life. We want to get people to think about it and talk about how it's a problem and what we should do about it. Hamish stared at her. She seemed serious. It occurred to him that he was talking to people who might not be in full control of their faculties. The usual Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons were bad enough, but this seemed ridiculous. Or oh, how's life a prison? he ventured. Oh, you fucking idiot! The man yelled, and continued to bang on about whatever it was he was banging on about. But the woman answered Hamish as if the man wasn't there, which added to the confusion. Existence entails suffering. All sentient life is controlled by DNA, which is what makes us reproduce, therefore reproducing more suffering, creating more need for no need. Life is an inefficient waste of energy. All life steals energy from each other. It's inefficient. It's wasteful. We're just saying enough. We want the right to not exist. That's all we're saying. We want people to have the discussion about ending this suffering once and for all. Hamish continued to stare. He wasn't sure how much of this made sense. He was no biologist, so he had no idea whether DNA controlled people or not. He recalled something about Richard Dawkins, but he wasn't much of a reader, so he didn't really know. It sounded, though, as if these people did know. Still, life being inefficient and wasteful, what did that mean? So, you want to end life on Earth? He ventured. Exactly, the woman asserted. So he was talking to a couple of loonies who wanted to end all life on Earth. He knew what he was dealing with now, at least. Well, he asked. Well, the woman replied, it's not really for us to say. It's part of the conversation that we have to have. I'm no expert. We have enough nuclear bombs to destroy the world completely already, the man interrupted. We can build bigger nuclear bombs if we want. It's perfectly logical. All we have to do is get nukes in various locations around the world and set them off. End of story. No one even knows it's coming. It's like if I shot you in the back of the head without you knowing. You wouldn't go, oh, that's a terrible thing because you wouldn't even know or feel it. Hamish now stared at this man who was talking about shooting him in the head. You're going to shoot me in the head? He said. No, I'm not going to fucking shoot you in the head. I don't want to go to prison. I'd like to. I'd like to shoot all you fucking assholes who just don't get it and just want to keep the whole damn thing going on. I'd feel no remorse at all. None. Hamish then turned to the woman who was only looking at him as if the obnoxious individual with her was perfectly normal. Is he all right? Hamish asked in all sincerity. This is in Bedlam. 
He invented waffleism. It's his philosophy. It's the most important philosophy ever made. It's going to lead us to the greatest human project ever attempted. Hamish turned his astonished stare from one to the other. The earnest young woman and the crazy old man. This was getting beyond mere awkward. Oh, okay, yeah, thanks uh, for visiting, but uh, not interested. Oh, yeah, you just like to see everyone in the world raped and crushed and tortured. Fuck off! Hamish finally exploded. Oh, fuck you! The woman retorted suddenly, breaking character. It's because of nihilist assholes like you that in Bedlam gets upset. Can't you just make your points without getting personal? Hamish finally slammed the door shut. He heard both of them yelling at him now, but when he opened the door again with a two-by-four in hand, they were walking away. He heard the woman saying as they left, Fucking coward couldn't even come up with a coherent argument. He watched them go, making sure they were off the property. Then he returned to his bedroom. His head ached even more. What, he asked himself, the fuck was that all about?